Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today I am going to show you how to make some really cute little mini album mini albums for Happy Mail or just to give as a gift to somebody and they are using toilet paper rolls, empty ones. So if you like to do trash to treasure projects, you love to send happy mail or give people handmade gifts, this is going to make a simple way to come up with a small little mini album. It's really super cute. If you wanna see how to do that, stick around. The things that I'm using, I will be using six toilet paper rolls. I will, I have some scrapbook paper here. This is a new spiced pumpkin paper pad from Michaels. If you wanna see a full flip, flip through of this, I just put out a video on two new paper pads from Michaels. These are the trend pads that they are coming out with that I guess are taking place of hot buys. And so I'm gonna be using paper from there. I pulled some ribbons that I had in my stash I have this embossing folder and stamp that I picked up at Michael's in one of the, it was a $2 bin. I got it for a dollar when it was half off. So I wanted to use that. And then I have some really cute wood pumpkin stickers from the Dollar Tree. I have a hole punch and some scissors and some orange buttons that I might use. And then I'll probably pull some other things from my stash after I know how I'm going to decorate this and get towards the end and want to add in the finishing touches. So stick around and we will start on this cute little mini album. So the first thing you will wanna do is go ahead and flatten out all of your toilet paper rolls. I left one here. I went ahead and did this one already. Now there are a couple different ways you can do this. I am using my Sizzix. You can use your Sizzix and put it on the regular number two platform and just stick your toilet paper roll in between your two mats, the clear mats, and roll it through and it'll just be plain flat. It'll make it nice and flat. I went ahead and used an embossing folder, even though after I'm done, I, it'll probably be covered up anyways, but that's what I did this time. Next time I probably just um, go ahead and flatten them without the embossing folder. Now, I do make little pocket tags with embossed toilet paper rolls. I will try and find the link that I did for these. I, th I believe they were Christmas tags and I left some of the embossing uncovered so you can actually see that. But with these little mini albums, I just covered the page with scrapbook paper. So that wasn't necessary, that's what I'm saying. If you don't have a Sizzix, you could totally just use your bone folder and crease, like flatten it out, crease it with your bone folder or a ruler and then lay them under some heavy books or something really heavy because you want them to be as flat as possible. These, these turned out pretty flat. I just like how that looks. So to use the emb embossing folder, if you have a Sizzix, you want to pull your first uh, platform out, the number two there, just pull that out because when you put the embossing folder, em, embossing folder in between your two clear mats, it would be too thick to have both layers on. So put your first clear mat down, then your embossing folder. Just kind of do a simple flattening of your toilet paper roll and stick it in, lining it up with the very center there just so you have it straight depending on what your embossing is but in this case it doesn't really matter because we're covering it up and then put your other clear mat down and go ahead and roll it on through this is pretty thick but it does go through there okay 
and then just makes it super flat. Love that. And that'll be covered up. That's just residue from the toilet paper. So yeah, and these do make really cute little tags. So and a little, you know, you can pocket, you could put a tag or a gift card. I believe the gift cards fit in here really nicely. So so that's what I did. I did go ahead and did all of them. Now, see this one is a little bit longer, so I'm gonna have to trim this because I want mine to be all the same length. If you wanted yours to be different lengths, you can. But I find that the toilet paper rolls are a couple different sizes. And, and it doesn't even matter what type of toilet paper you use because we use the same kind and they vary. <laughs> but it seems like it's just two different sizes, so. I'm going to trim this one off. I think they're, yeah, these, the smaller ones are four inches. This one is four and a half. I'm not sure why they alternate like that, but so these are all the same. Now, what you're going to do is cut 12 pieces of scrap of paper in any pattern that you want, however you want to lay them out in the book. I kind of like to alternate. What I did was I picked, I did three of this acorn pattern and then I did three of the plaid pattern and then I did a couple of this pumpkin and then a couple of this pattern that has the raspberries and leaves and then a couple of the stripe. So now I actually need to trim these down a little bit because I had made another little mini album and most of my toilet paper rolls were the longer size. So I went ahead and cut extra for this album when I was doing that, forgetting that these were the shorter rolls. They were, you know, they were already short to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and trim these down. But what I did was I just measured and made these pieces a little bit smaller than my toilet paper roll. So Let's see what I need to cut these down to. With four. So I'll probably. Try three and seven eighths. And they are two and a half inches. Tall. So three and seven eighths by two and a half inches and I cut you want to cut 12 of those so I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these down to the three and seven eighths Now what we're going to do is just start gluing these pieces onto our toilet paper rolls and you're going to do front and back side. So just kind of lay them out the way or put them in the order that you want them in. Got a lot of fuzzies on my floor here. There we go. Lay them or put them together the, in the order that you want them to be on front and back. Just kind of alternating. And I always like to have the front and the back covers the same, so I'm gonna leave that for the very end. All right, so just like that. Now I'm just gonna start gluing. 
I'm trying out a different glue. I had received this in my stocking <laughs> for Christmas one year and it's been sitting in my glue drawer for a while. It's the Elmer's Craft Bond and I've actually used it already on another one of these that I made and I, I like it. I don't know what the price point is on it. Um, if you know me, I like the tacky glue and I think it works great and the price is great. You can actually get tacky glue at the Dollar Tree and it's usually the, the best price at Walmart or even Michaels and Joann's. So, but this seems to be work well. It's a clear glue and it says it's craft bond. So if you want to try this, I will put a link for it down below. So now I'm just going to start gluing and do both sides. And then we'll be back to continue on here. Now this is, these are, this is a cardstock, so it does glue well with the liquid glue and doesn't seem to buckle or anything. Now for our next step, I want to add a binding edge onto each of these, the side that you're going to be putting your rings in. And so I cut down some of this pumpkin paper and it is two inches wide by two and a half, which is the height that we cut these. Now this will be different depending on well, most likely your height will be the same on the toilet paper rolls. It seems like the, that's pretty standard when you flatten it out. It'll be this direction, like when you go to do this one, that will be different. So it is two and a half by two inches by two and a half inches tall. And then you're just going to fold that in half. You need to cut six of these. So I did that already. And now I'm just going to glue these on to each one of the toilet paper rolls. Just like that, and this can be whatever pattern paper, or you could use a solid paper there if you want. that complete now you want to punch your holes in your little page and I did two here and I probably did it about I don't know a little less than a half inch from each side I just kind of eyeballed it I started with my first one and what I'm using is the crocodile and I'm using the bigger hole but you can use a hole punch. I think the whole, the crocodile is a lot easier when you're punching through something thick like this. I'll put a link for a crocodile down below for you. And I'm going about 3 eighths inch in and about a half inch from the side. So I will go ahead and do all of mine. Taking the first one, it's easy if you just then put it on top of the second one and I make a little dot with a pencil or a sharpie or a pen or whatever and then you can know where the hole is on the second one or you know there'll be the dot there then you can punch it and I just did that all the way down until I had all of my holes punched 
and then um, went on to the next step. Now I'm going to add two one inch binder rings and these are from Amazon. I found that it was the cheapest price um, than buying them through like Office Depot or Staples going there. Um, and you can buy a whole bunch of one size as opposed to usually in the stores they're like a variety pack and I like the one inch size. I use this a lot for making my tassels on my junk journals so I, I need a bunch of this size and this happens to be a good size for this little mini album so you just want to put those through the holes if you don't have any binder rings you can also just use a piece of twine like a piece of twine or a ribbon and tie it through I just think it makes it easier to flip the pages And then I tie ribbons around here as well, so I think that makes it really look really cool for a little mini album. So there's that. Now what you need to do is decorate and we can cut out our tags to put in the pockets. So I have some of the paper that came with the collection one sheet had a bunch of the pumpkins and the little foxes so for the front page I chose this image and I just cut it down to a little square and then I backed it with some of the blue paper that was in the pad and I'm just going to glue that down on the front here so this size is probably about two by one and three quarters maybe. You just have to cut it down to fit on that front cover. So I'll just glue these together and glue them on. I'm going to put it a little bit closer over to the side, leave a little space, more room over here because I want to use one of my little pumpkins that I, the wood sticker pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I really like this glitter pumpkin here. So that's gonna go along the side. I also picked the one sheet of paper from that pad had this the border strips on it and this was on there so I want to cut one of them to put along the side there so I'm gonna move this over a little bit I'm not sure if I want I still want that little pumpkin on there so I think I'll do this give thanks and just trim it because I want it to cover the whole entire little, the length of that. So I'll glue that down. And I apologize if you hear my air conditioner going. <laughs> it's kind of hot here, so I have to have that going. It would just get too boiling hot inside the house. And we have just a little window air conditioner, so sorry about that. Now, let's see, let's make it straight here. Got that down, and I want to add one of these little pumpkins. I think these are the cutest, these wood stickers that they came out for fall for Dollar Tree. I love them. So I'm going to use this and just add it here. I'm 
gonna add glue because you never know if these stickers are gonna hold. Just like that. Really cute. And then I also want to put a picture on the back cover. So I'm just gonna turn it over here. And actually I'm gonna pull it out like this so I don't mess that side up. And so I have this cut out. It's the fox, but he's laying down and sleeping. But I do need to trim it a little bit because it needs to be able to fit on here. So I'm just gonna use my trimmer, trim it down. and glue those together and we'll put the back put that on the back cover Now you can add more embellishments to this. I have some buttons. Let me see if I want to add a button on the front. I just want it on the front though. If I do add one. button on there. All right, so our next step, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And the next step that we need to do is cut our tags and add ribbons to them. So again, I had these cut for the longer sized toilet paper rolls. And I'm going to check and see if they will, they are the right width but they're a little bit too long I want to cut them probably about maybe a little less than a half of an inch down or a quarter inch so let me do that and they are two and a quarter inches wide so it fits perfect in there and what I did was I used the scraps from the paper that I put on the pages to make the tags. But you could use solid color cardstock if you want. Just depends on what you're doing. So I'm going to cut these down about 3 8 inch. This one was a little bit smaller because it was just a scrap, so I thought I would use that. Let's do that later here.
figure out which way you want your prints. So with this one, I think I want it to be able to pull out like that. So that's right. My pumpkin, I'll turn it around this way because I want them all to be facing. So yeah, the other ones are fine because they don't really have a direction. So I'm just going to use my hole punch again, the crocodile, and punch holes in the top so I can tie ribbons. Or you could staple if you want on, on the top if you don't want to punch the holes. And if you have a die that cuts tags out, you could do that as well. Just your personal preference. This is just an easy way to do it if you don't have a Sizzix. Okay, now I'm, I like to have the little corners cut off on my tags, so I'm just gonna go through and do that. And I'm just eyeballing it. So nothing complicated. So now you just need to figure out which pocket you want it to go in. I kind of like to have it staggering. So that one can go in there. I'll put this one here. Then of course we're gonna go in and tie ribbons. So you don't, you know, you don't need to put them all in, but you know what I mean, just kind of stagger them. I like them to be contrasting to whatever paper is on that page. So let's see if I, you know what, I am going to go ahead and stick them in because then I'm going to stagger the color of ribbon that I put in depending on which one it is. So put that there, this one would be good to put here. So it looks like pretty much the way I'm, they were stacked up would be the way I have them. And this is the back page. You know what, see, like here, I don't, I want it to be different. So I'm gonna change that one. And then this one will go on the other, the back page there. All right, so now, you just need to tie our ribbons here and tie our ribbons here. The last thing I want to do to my album is add some little die cuts. I actually cut these out from one of the pieces of paper that was in the pad, this super cute page that has foxes, a squirrel, rabbit, raccoon. Yeah. Oh, and the little hedgehog. He's super cute. So I cut out the animals and then I cut out some of the leaves. So I'm going to just put those throughout the book. 
I don't want to add a lot to the inside on the pages because I want the recipient that's receiving this to be able to put pictures inside of it. So I'm just going to add a little bit to the inside and since it's just the paper, though, it'll be pretty flat. So I'll just go in and just glue a little bit down. Really cute. I at least want one little die cut per page and or you know per spread put them in different spots these are just really cute I love this paper this year if you haven't checked out my paper pad haul I just I picked up two of the new fall paper pads at Michael's I'll put the link for that down below. I just posted that. I found the pumpkin or the spiced pumpkin and the llama love, and they are just adorable. So cute. I'll add this little squirrel up on this side. And the rabbit I'll put on this page since she's holding a raspberry. go ahead and put some leaves down here a couple of the pages Oops. I can pick it up there we go all right so here it is. I think this turned out so pretty. Love the paper pad and just the combination of the ribbons and all the papers together along with that cute pumpkin sticker from the Dollar Tree. It just turned out really cute. So I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment and subscribe and I will see you again next time. Head on over to Instagram and follow me there because I post things I try to daily of things I'm working on, things I'm posting in my Etsy shop, new YouTube videos and tutorials. I'm also having a Dollar Tree Junk Journal challenge for 2019. It is a challenge to for you to make yourself a junk journal using all Dollar Tree products and the deadline for the giveaway part of the challenge is the end of September. So I'll put the link for that video down below so that you can check out all the requirements and hopefully you can join me. So we'll see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Practicality. Bye. God bless.